Welcome to the module on Stationary Natural Gas Set Lubrication. Could you feel the increased pollution level and health risks around us? One of the major reasons for this is the usage of diesel engines, which are used from trucks and buses to construction equipment and generators. To handle such situations and to meet our growing energy needs, the world is transitioning to a cleaner energy future with natural gas engines. But what's so special about natural gas? Natural gas costs less and produces fewer emissions than diesel and gasoline, making it a desirable alternative fuel for internal combustion IC engines. It leads to lower emissions of nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxide and particulates. Also, natural gas usually has zero sulphur. We would need less total base number TBN and no suit to lubricate the valves. Even engine manufacturers have responded by supplying new natural gas engines of all sizes, from small light duty engines of a few kilowatt to low speed two stroke engines of over 60 megawatt, which can be used for power generation. So, the usage of stationary natural gas engine has tremendous positive impact for us. Stationary natural gas engine is used for five major purposes. Power generation, prime mover for compressors, combined heat and power CHP generation and compression and transportation of gas in pipeline systems. Thus, stationary natural gas engines are convenient power generators in places where gas sources are readily available, such as in oil and gas fields, refineries, sewage plants, landfill sites, etc. Some common categories of natural gas engines are pre-mixed charge, spark ignition and only natural gas. Pre-mixed charge, diesel pilot ignition and natural gas or diesel dual fuel and high pressure direct injection of natural gas, diesel pilot ignition and natural gas or diesel dual fuel. Across the globe, natural gas is available in various locations. Specifically in India, the distribution of natural gas reserves is available in more than three locations. Also, India as a gas-based economy has several policies and reforms to enhance and sustain the utilization of natural gas. In 2018, government raised a proposal to increase the primary energy mix of natural gas from its current level of 6% to 15% by 2030. Hydrocarbon Exploration and Licensing Policy HELP, calls for a standard licensing scheme that will be applicable to all hydrocarbons, including coal bed methane, gas and oil. The goal of the Natural Gas Marketing Reforms Policy is to provide a uniform process for determining the market price of gas through an open and competitive process while allowing for marketing flexibility. Adding on, Sustainable Alternative Towards Affordable Transportation SATAT plan invites expressions of interest from potential entrepreneurs with the goal of establishing compressed biogas production facilities and making them available on the market in vehicle fuels. Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board PNGRB, has authorized 
about a 33,500 kilometer natural gas pipeline network throughout the nation to establish a national gas grid. Not only that, Indian Gas Exchange, IGX, is India's first gas exchange established in June 2020. This exchange is expected to make the price discovery of natural gas more transparent. Furthermore, networks for city gas distribution, CGD, are being developed to deliver piped natural gas, PNG, to homes and businesses as well as compressed natural gas, CNG, for use in vehicles. It's not over yet. India sees natural gas as a bridge fuel to a cleaner energy future. And for that, our government is on a mission to gas up India. It has set actions for the development of gas infrastructure, such as the expansion of the national gas grid to 33,500 km from 21,715 km. The expansion of CGD network like PNG connections and establishment of CNG stations and setting up of LNG terminals. Imagine CNG vehicles as the new superheroes on the Indian roads. The sale of CNG vehicles has more than doubled in the financial year 2022 as compared to the last fiscal year. They are becoming increasingly popular even as fuel prices rise. Also, 49% of the light commercial vehicles LCVs sold in the financial year 2022 were CNG powered compared to 22% in the financial year 2021. And for long haul heavy duty truck fleets, liquefied natural gas LNG is a viable alternative to diesel. A million out of 10 million trucks are expected to be run on LNG by 2035. Having said that, natural gas engines also require lubrication oil like any other IC engine. So next, let's understand the aspects of natural gas engine oil, NGEO. Basically, stationary natural gas engines are of different types with varying engine configurations. They are two-stroke and four-stroke engines varying from 100 kilowatt to 18 megawatt and 25 liters to 6 kiloliters or up to 20 cylinders. And the lubrication used in these engines has to be NGEO. NGEO burns leaner with no soot contamination of crank case. This results in lower detergency, dispersancy and ash levels. NGEO is known for the characteristics of oxidation stability, anti-rust, anti-wear and anti-foam. However, Temperatures in natural gas engines are higher, ranging from 165 degrees Celsius to 235 degrees Celsius compared to diesel engines. This elevated temperature contributes to increased oxidation, nitration and valve wear. For what else do we have to be cautious about the natural gas engine? It's the condition of oil stress. This includes factors such as gas burning very hot, engines running at continuous loads, and stationary engines often being in remote applications with dusty environments and higher ambient temperatures. Oxidation and nitration are also critical here. 
it is always important to practice proper maintenance and performance monitoring. That being said, even NGEO will need some essential requirements to keep a note of. NGEO must have high resistance to oxidation and nitration, good anti-wear and anti-scuffing properties, good anti-corrosion properties, dispersancy or detergency, low phosphorus, low ash content, be chlorine free. Not only these, there are several lubricant general tests to check the quality of NGEO. The table shows the lists of test parameters, method of tests and their significance. There are four basic categories of NGEO. They are no ash, less than 0.1% sulfated ash with performance credential of Servo Special NG40, low ash, 0.1 to less than 0.6% with performance credential of Servo Green Edge or Servo NGE40 or Servo NG40. Medium ash, 0.6 to less than 1.2% with performance credential of Servo Bright GEO 15 W40 and high ash more than 1.2% also for stationary natural gas engine oils we do not require API performance credentials however most industry products confirm to API CF levels on the other hand adequate sulfated ash content is one of the key parameters. With these essential information, let's get into the development of NGEO. The base engine oil must be oxidation stable with state-of-the-art robust additive chemistry. So, the base oils must be API Group 1 and Group 2 with the additives of detergent, dispersant, thickener, antioxidant, anti-wear, PPD, defoment, and corrosion inhibitor. To ensure the quality of the engine oil, we conduct tier evaluation program that involves laboratory, tribology, and engine testing. Each of these has its own purposes. In continuation with the engine oil quality, an innovative low ash gas engine oil is also developed for stationary application which meets API CF performance credentials in SAE 40 viscometrics. In addition, it's important to emphasize that the low ash gas engine oil meets or exceeds all industry standard performance parameters. Adding on, ash directly provides valve protection in four stroke engines. It is wise to use optimum ash content to ensure necessary valve protection and acid neutralization because using higher ash oils might accumulate more deposits in the engine which shall lead to over lubrication thus apart from all the discussed features of NGEO shown are the typical characteristics of NGEO with respect to its test methods and test results. Next, with respect to the ash level, servo product and OEM approval, NGEO 
is further classified into different types. For two-stroke engine, it is ashless with the servo product Servo Special NG40. Then, for four-stroke engine, the ash level is low with different servo products such as Servo Green Edge, Servo NGE40 and Servo NG40. The approvals for these are Watsila for Servo Green Edge and Caterpillar or MWM or GE Yenbacher for Servo NGE40. With that, let's move on to the specific lube oil consumption SLOC. SLOC is an indication of how much oil is consumed per unit power generated. Lower the SLOC, better the oil. If SLOC is more, it indicates more consumption, which means more operational cost. To calculate SLOC in gram or kilowatt hour, SLOC is equal to oil consumption in liters multiplied by density of oil multiplied by 1000 divided by rated capacity of engine multiplied by running hours. For accurate end result, top up and sweetening contribute to SLOC and sump volume is not included in the SLOC calculation. According to Watsila limits, SLOC should not exceed the value of 0.4 to 0.5 gram per kilowatt hour. So, let's hold hands with natural gas engines and oils for clean energy and a sustainable future. Thank you.